Hello everybody, this is Kier Reek here, and this is another episode of Review and Release. Today we're doing a review for Prison Architect. Uh, what it is, it's a prison planner simulator. It's cartoony, it's 2D, you build your prison, you decide your policies, keep control over your inmates, rehabilitate them if you feel like it, or you can execute them in some cases, and overall you kind of expand your prison, make more money, get bigger. Now, uh, I'm a big fan of building games. I was big on cities. I always liked Rollercoaster Tycoon, you know, those simulation building type games. Um, and I'm really enjoying this one. It's got lots of pros. It looks good. The cartoony look, um, it really does look like it's just, you know, someone drew a little stick figure cartoon people out on the paper and they posted them in there. And it works well for the game because it doesn't take itself too seriously, even though there is some mature subject matter. Now, of course, people are dying, they get stabbed, things that usually happen in a prison. There's drugs, violence, riots, all those things. Um, it runs really well, I think, for its undertaking. Generally, these kind of simulation games, once you get going really far, you end up with really big simulations that are pretty straining on your CPU. I felt this wasn't too bad. I got up to, like, I've run prisons with a thousand prisoners and up, and it was still running all right. It gets pretty choppy when you get really high, but... Uh, for the general size of the prison you'll likely be making, it's not bad. Now, the tutorial was really nice. It was told through a campaign. The campaign takes place over five levels, and it kind of walks you through some of the more complicated aspects of the game, such as execution, rehabilitation, uh, things like that. And it's a nice story to follow along. It's not super engaging, but it's better than just telling you, click here to do this, click here to do this. And I, I appreciated that. Now it's pretty easy to understand. Uh, the UI is straightforward. If you look at the bottom, there are you know your regular things for rooms, your foundations, your materials, your objects, your logistics. All those things are laid out there, and you click on those, it brings up another little menu, and from there you can place your things. That's pretty straightforward. The top left gives you access to things like your tech tree. The top, oh, sorry, say the bottom right. It gives you access to things like grants, prisoner intakes, policies, and things like that. And the top right is your clock and game speed. Now, I could say that UI is pretty intuitive. And once you get playing around in it, it's easy to find the things you're looking for. The mods for this game, there are plenty of them. It's got a great Steam Workshop community. Uh, so go ahead and check it out. I found some of them do destabilize the game a bit, especially depending on who they're made by. So there are good ones out there. I'm running the grants. I'm running like the the extended grants. I'm running. What else am I taking? Uh, workman, a foreman in a box because you basically need that one. Uh, and there's lots of good ones out there. So check that out. I always love mods. Escape mode is a really cool thing. Uh, you get to play as the prisoner. You kind of form your little gang. You start riots. You wreck shit. And with the overall goal of escaping the prison in the end. It's pretty sweet. Uh, I did like it, and it's a nice break from just building the prison. Uh, finally, it's got really entertaining occurrences and people. Now, every character in that game, I shouldn't say every character, but a lot of them, are actually inputted by players who bought the special edition. They got to put their name in with a little biography and a story of each character, and I think some of them are really funny. Take the time, click on them, look at their portfolio. It's, it's really neat. Uh, for the cons... It does have some limited replayability. Uh, I mean, you build your prison, but it's somewhat repetitive in that way because, like, you start with your cells, your shower, your canteen, your kitchen, you know, those kind of things. And then you start working on the more, more abstract stuff like the classroom, the workshop, you know, the things that aren't necessarily needed for happy prisoners, but, um, well, actually, they are needed for happy prisoners, but aren't needed to maintain order. Whereas, they are helpful for rehabilitation. But once you go past that, let's say you want to expand to a bigger prison, well, what do you do? You got to build cells again, which means those cells need a bigger shower or another shower. They need more kitchens, canteen areas, you know, rec rooms, things like that. And it just keeps growing and growing and growing to the point where I feel like I was just doing the same thing over and over just for the sake of boosting my prisoner population. I wish there was a little bit more variation in that kind of stuff. The vanilla game, uh, I felt some of the restrictions were a little silly. The one that really comes to mind is the one foreman rule. Um, the foreman is responsible for your workers, but he's also needed to do workshop duties. So if you have a large prison and you want more than one workshop, 
you're kind of shit out of luck in the vanilla game because the foreman can only run one workshop at a time. So what that really meant for me was that I found myself, I wanted to produce lots of money with the workshops because they do produce money. And I ended up having to download the mod, Foreman in a Box. Now uh, it was pretty sweet, it let me have more than one Foreman. So I kind of feel like that's a silly restriction. Why can't I hire more of them, right? You can hire more than one psychologist. What's the difference? Finally, the annoying bits uh, in the game are really it's kind of weird habits. Like when you're doing foundations, I found the difference between I have this room and I want to expand that room versus I have this room and I want to add a room next to it. Sometimes it would just take the previous room, knock the wall down, and make it huge. Well, that's a big problem if the free previous room was a jail cell or a restricted area, and now prisoners are running amok. That really ticked me off. I, I wasn't really sure why. I don't know why they decided to do it that way, but it, it is what it is, and I uh, have to work around it and kind of learn its quirks. So for our score gameplay, I'm going to give it a 2.5 out of 3. I thought the gameplay was really good. It is intuitive, and it is fun. Uh, it's it's neat to kind of watch your guys go around. It's nice to make those rooms, to build those things, employ your guards, manage the little details. I really enjoy those kind of things. I think it makes for a good gameplay experience, but it's not perfect. For the addiction, I give it a 1 out of 2. Uh, in short bursts, I was definitely pretty addicted to it. I kept coming back for more, and, and I played pretty heavily, but then it got to the point where it's just like, eh, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't feel like doing more with it. It wasn't, it wasn't keeping me there after the initial burst. So I think one out of two is fair. For the reliability, I'd have to give it a one out of one. I never had any problems with the vanilla game, so no, no score loss there. For the atmosphere, I'll give it a one out of two. I think it does give you kind of the atmosphere that you're in charge of the prison, but at times. Like when things don't work or things look off, like the metal detectors or, you know, the cantina, there's a weird fight and no one's cleaning out the blood. There's some things that just really ruin the immersion for me, and that's why it loses that one point. For the replay value, unfortunately, like I said, it's not really replayable and it does get repetitive. So I have to give it a 0 0.5 out of 2, unless you're into building gimmicky prisons, like there's a castle on there, um, people building Alcatraz, like, you know, themed things then there's not really much there for you. That means our total score is a 6 out of 10. I think that's not too bad. It is a fun game. It's a little overpriced in my opinion, but you can get it pretty cheap if it ever goes on sale. Um, they do seem reluctant to put it on sale, although it was recently featured in a Humble Bundle, so that may have been your chance. <laughs> Sorry, it's a little too late. That's where I picked it up though, I was waiting for a long time, and I was too stingy to pay it the full price. So if you're the developers listening to this, lower the price a bit. Your game is nice, but it's not AAA, it's still an indie game. Thank you everybody for watching, check out my other videos, stay safe, and I'll see all of you again soon.